Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. I have some new maps and some new imagery to show you guys from this region that we've been looking at, this Magallanica or Magellanica, however you want to pronounce it, near Tierra del Fuego, the tip of South America that I have alleged wasn't nearly as far away from Antarctica in 1600 as it is now. Now, the reason I start with this particular map is that it's from 1850. And the most important thing on this map is that at the tip of South America, at the bottom, it doesn't show any other land. But more importantly, it's a much more detailed, accurate map of the region. I'm a big believer in form follows function. We don't see all of the crazy images on this map. I mean, we see some of trees and Indians and certain animals, very calm, but nothing like what we saw in maps from the 1500s. Now, how they created maps in the 1800s was virtually the exact same way they created maps in the 1500s. Why so different? The reason, of course, has to do with technology. Maps in the 1500s, were not only meant to show the lay of the land, so to speak, but what could be found there. And that's what I'd like this video to be about. They found very different things. And if you were going to send a warning to someone about what they could find, this would be the best way to do it if they were going to travel to the region. Now, the ability to defend yourself in 1850 was very, very different than 1550. We had... Um, Weapons. I mean, modern, everyday types of weapons that you and I would define guns, basically. Now, in this older map, though, there is something that I would like to show that I see repeating over and over again. They show these very tall, light-skinned um, inhabitants that you don't see down there now, but almost all of them have bows and arrows, clubs and shields. Not very advanced, even for the 1500s. I mean, in the 1500s, the Europeans had uh, pole arms and axes and cutlasses and broadswords and all this kind of stuff. 
But there's this animal right here. And it's a representation of something down there that even science hasn't been able to define or find. It's called the Sukurath. And the description of it is just defies belief. Face of a man, body of a lion, giant tail that covered its young that resided on its back. Fierce like nothing else. Uh, deadly. And the only way to trap it is dig a deep pit and cover it with brush and hope it falls in and then you could uh, spear it or shoot it with arrows to death. Just beyond anything that you could describe. Think Tasmanian devil meets giant sloth with the tail of a peacock. It's just strange. We looked at this map before yesterday, and once again, the reason I bring it up is it shows these giants, but with clubs, shields, bows, and arrows. Now, if we would think, wait a minute, these aren't these giants supposed to be from South America or from Antarctica, and wouldn't they have been incredibly advanced and have all this technology? Antarctica might have not been home to just one race of people. There might have been multiple races down there with multiple levels of technology, just like we see today. If you would, Venezuela is a great example. You go from downtown Caracas to just maybe three or four or five hundred miles away, and you see people living like they lived a thousand years ago out in the, the jungle. It's just the way it is. It might have been the same down there. Someone in my audience had actually mentioned from this map that they saw something in very keen eye. It shows this half ostrich, half human shooting an arrow at another ostrich and then another Indian trying to shoot it. There were stories from this place, Tierra del Fuego, Magellanica, of what they call Patagonian monsters. And in this image, I had to look at this one for a long time to try to figure out what was going on here. Why are both of these giants having their hand out as if they're asking for something from the smaller character? But most importantly here, look at what the shorter character is holding. This is called a halberd or a poleaxe, polearm. And when I get the new computer, and it's going to be in the next probably week or two, 4K, bigger screen than this, I'm going to show you a picture in Antarctica. It looks like it's some type of a wall image from a building that's collapsed. But on that wall image, there is a what looks like a soldier, ancient soldier, holding a pole arm, a pole axe over his shoulder, and in front of him, there's this huge beast. Now, I know many of you are like, oh, show us now. Trust me on this one. It's one of these images. I'm going to need the 4K to show you. I can see it. If I had you sitting right here next to me, I could show it to you. If I could buy you a 24-inch screen, you could see it. But there's just no way to show it without getting that level of detail. So I'm going to wait to do that. But pole arms and pole axes are not things that are found in South America, not in this time. They had to have been brought from Spain. And once again, we don't see these giants wearing very much down here. And this region is cold now. I mean, it is really cold. There would be no way if the weather were in the 1500s in this region like it is now that you would have seen anybody dressed like this. They'd die from hypothermia, giant or not. And in this one, this is the one that should really make you take notice. Now, remember, these maps were not meant to just show the lay of the land and how to get around, but what you could find there. I want you to look up here in the corner. These aren't horses. This is some kind of what we would classically, I guess, refer to as a dinosaur. Four legs, body, giant neck. And this is as close as I can get this map to zoom in. Let me see if I can get it closer. Hold on. I guess I was wrong about that. Why would someone have... This is... A, there's. I just can't even think of what animal they would be representing here. 
given the size of it next to a tree, sitting down. Seriously, what could that be that we know of? And once again, here we see the giant, but the giant is what? Holding a club and animals, what I think they're referring to here might be jaguars, are only barely knee high. Now, some people ask, why are giants always wearing almost next to nothing? At the time, many people wore clothing made from animal skins. Well, most of the animals that they would kill were larger than they were, so there wasn't this need to sew multiple pelts together to create things to wear. You just had to basically kind of cut holes in them or create some kind of fastener. Well, if you're a giant that's 20 feet tall, unless you have some type of sewing skill or someone working for you, you're not going to have much to wear. And, you know, if you're a giant, most of them were described as batshit crazy anyway. Maybe you just didn't care. This region down here, and this one actually shows the advent of um, firearms. This guy has a rifle. So this might be the beginning of the end of the giants, because giant or not, you know, firearms are the great equalizer. I don't care if you're 20 feet tall or 40 feet tall. If I've got a 50 caliber handgun, you're not going to probably live through three or four rounds. It's just not going to happen. There were also stories like this, which is, you know, almost unbelievable. But once again, the most important thing about this picture is look in the background, not these two in the front, but the two in the background right here in the middle. Look at the size of them versus the opening of the hut. You would think if someone was going to create a hut, they would create an opening that they could walk through. Well, these creatures in the background clearly didn't create this hut. So if this is five feet, six feet tall, these things would have to be, what, eight, nine feet tall? I mean, it wouldn't have been hard for the artist to create this cabin in the background a little bigger or create these things smaller just a little bit just to show if they were really... I don't think the scale is wrong here. It wouldn't have been that difficult to put it to scale if this were what they were trying to describe. Now, a couple locations in Antarctica I wanted to show before we get out of here. I know we're already over 10 minutes. Shadows. Shadows from above are much easier to see than the actual thing. And the reason I bring up this picture, it's a classic picture of camels in the desert. You can see the shadow clearly. But look at the animals that are casting the shadow. If you took all the shadows away, and I just showed this little kind of lighter brown um, region, and said, look, it's a camel, most of my viewers would go, no, it's not. It's just a pile of dirt. It's just a different color amount of sand and some strange thing. It's not a camel. Without the shadow, you wouldn't know. Now, let me show you something in Antarctica. In this region, this is the Mertz Ninnis Valley, where there are dozens and dozens of finds. This has this structure right here, this shadow. There is no good explanation for that other than an antenna array of some kind. Nothing out here. If this is truly just wind, ice, rock, and snow, and the wind blowing at this incredible rate that would sandblast anything, nothing natural this skinny and tall would survive. Just no way. And you can see stuff like this all over in this region. And, of course, I'll give you the link to it. There's also, very close to this, I think, a fourth, what they call, tic-tac structure. Now, this comes from the descriptions from the Navy pilots very re recently in the Nimitz incident. They talk about these craft they encountered that were tic-tac in shape, white, oblong, round, 
9 to 14 meters or 30 to 46 feet long. And you can get that right from the wiki. From You can just look up uh, Nimitz UFO incident. And you can get that information. That's all over YouTube too. So anyway, I just wanted to show this. It's discreet, meaning that it's different than its surroundings. It has this strange purple glow to it. But when you measure it, and I'll show you this. We're going to go ahead and measure in. We'll do meters first. Twelve meters long. That's between nine and fourteen. That's what the Navy pilot said. In feet, thirty-nine point seven zero feet, or forty feet long. So right in the window, same shape, same color, same dimensions. Setting on the ice in Antarctica. I think this is just more proof that what we're seeing these aren't coming from other planets. That's why Mars is such a waste of time. If they have that much time, money, effort, and science, they need to be divining what's going on down here first. Instead of. Because there's going to be, well, I'm just going to shut up there before I reveal something I can't reveal. Anyway, like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir?